Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Risky Rise, aka the Risk Taker, aka the Chips Maker Man. We back with another one. Hold on, hold on. Now today we talking about none other than Lil E, aka Lil Extra, aka Mr. Do the Most. Now he comes from that M Block set, that ATB set, and we already know how they give it up. Lil E, one of them niggas for real. And if you ask me, he the craziest nigga in the series. Now the first thing we gotta talk about, of course, is the Frankie robbery. What started off as a simple lick, ended up being a whole war that nobody could prevent. For some reason, Lil E trigger finger was itching that night, and he wasn't satisfied with just getting away with some money. That nigga wanted blood. The thing about Lil E, he don't need a reason. When it's time to go, that nigga just on go. That nigga ended up stripping T-Man and shooting Frankie in this shit. He ain't care about nothing. After the Frankie robbery, shit would start turning up in the streets. And that's when we would see the real side of Lil E. And just days after that, Lil E ended up robbing a random lady for a whip. This nigga was out of control. Him and Diddy was just walking to the store, you know, regular daggly usual shit. Son see the car, he started getting big at it. One thing led to another, Lil E pull a thing out store talking crazy. Y'all already know what happened after that. Now we gotta talk about the shootout at the liquor store when Lil E pressed John John. Now as we all know, John John was playing that role, acting like he wasn't involved with this shit. But deep down, Lil E knew that nigga was gonna be a problem, but he was the only one that seen it. Once shit cracked off, Lil E already knew what he had to do, especially after seeing Kwa get hit. Now as we all know, Kwa had the bulletproof vest on, so he ended up being good. But at the time, Lil E ain't know about none of that shit, so he get to throwing that motherfucker. That was the first time E ran in the scrap since way back. And if you ask me, this won't be the last time that they face each other. Now we gotta talk about when Lil E caught them two bodies. And yeah, I'm talking about them two bodies. Now after the shootout, for the next couple days, Lil E would slide Riverside religiously. I'm talking day and night. Lil E ended up killing Slim and his nephew Claiborne. These two bodies would change the war forever. After this type of shit, wasn't no going back. Lil E thought he was ready for that. This would mark the second time that Lil E actions had started a war in the streets. Now Lil E would have personal beef with Clayway, dragging M Block and ATB into the mix. And like I said before, these niggas wasn't nothing to play with. Them niggas stood on that business and them niggas sent the message. They let everybody know that they ain't got no picks with this shit. They ended up getting a low on Lil E and you know they slid through that bitch. Luckily for E, he was able to get away, but his bitch got killed at the scene. So of course, Lil E had to turn up his savage. Shit was getting too real out here. A few days after that, Lil E was backsliding through Riverside, broad day, caught that nigga T-Man, and of course he let it off at him. When Lil E hollered at Diddy about it, of course Diddy had to let him know that he was bugging the fuck out. But as you seen, Lil E just don't give a fuck. He on whatever type timing right now, and ain't nothing changing his mind. Niggas gotta feel where Lil E coming from though. Son had been through a lot in these past couple weeks. Even though most of it is his fault, still, Lil E just a different type of savage that nobody could relate to. I'm gone.